That really is enough. And the reason that other people aren't doing it is because that's hard all in itself. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you only had to go to the gym? Well, I like going to the gym, but let's just say you only had to go to the gym once a week and you could eat pizza and you would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Time for the board a-hole here. And I accidentally went for a walk down memory lane the other day. I don't even know how this happened, but I was mucking around with some emails. I was searching for a certain email when all of a sudden I was transported back 10 years and I did have one that was called New Diet. And I was like, well, I got to click that and I got to see what's going on. And I don't even remember who gave me this, if I came up with it myself or what it is based on. But it was a non-workout and well, a training day and a non-training day plan. And all of a sudden, it just brought all this stuff back to me. And I was like, if only somebody had come up to me and shaken me around and said, one, you're going to lose your hair in a few years. But also, two, a lot of what you're doing is absolute gubbins. Well, I mean, look, you know, making mistakes is a part of life. And maybe I wouldn't know now if I hadn't have dropped the ball there. But also, if somebody had educated me, maybe my gains and my progress and my evolution in the fitness palace of love the gym would have been better. So I thought, well, I can take all this. And I can throw it out there into the world of YouTube. And if I can help you, hell yeah. So here it is. I just snapped a screenshot of it onto my phone off my off my email. And it's got training day and non-training day. And like it is just it just feels like I've I could probably did this too, because I was quite young, obviously. And it kind of just feels like I've seen somebody else's diet and thought, well, they look good. I'm going to try and copy them. And as we've said time and time again, it's a waste of time. You need to be able to bring in nutritional information from many walks of life and then tailor make it to you. Otherwise, you're going to be walking up the wrong pathway. But apparently on a training day, meal one is three whole eggs, five egg whites, 30 grams of cheese, and two scoops of whey protein. Now, that's a decent amount of protein in there, which is good. And actually, protein-wise, it's not so bad. I can only imagine that I put cheese in there because I wanted to eat cheese. Like some people go, oh, it's a good source of fat, so it's got protein in it. No, it's not. You don't need cheese in your diet. I'm not saying you can't have cheese in your diet, but I'm just saying it's so high in calories that you're going to have to sacrifice some things elsewhere. And I think you're going to wind up hungry. So although it's going to feel delicious on your tongue and you're going to want to do a backflip at the time, when it gets to 3, 4 p.m. and you're not allowed something with a bit more sustenance to it, you're going to be upset. So anyway, we're having eggs and cheese and a whey protein shake. I have no idea why. They're milled two on a training day, don't forget. So, so far we've had zero carbs. Training day, we're doing 250 grams of chicken, 30 grams of almonds and vegetables. So that's good. I mean, way too much chicken, I would argue. But again, it depends on how big you are, etc. But I think at the time, I didn't need 250 grams of chicken. Good that I'm getting my healthy fats in there when it comes to almonds. But again, super calorific. So something you want to look at. And my veggies that are in there is, is good. And then meal three is 250 grams of salmon and chicken. How the hell could I afford 250 grams of salmon? I don't know. I don't even imagine I ate that. So that's nonsense. Vegetables. And then we've also thrown in 90 grams of avocado. Now, the weird thing here is if I had gone for 250 grams of chicken, the 90 grams of avocado, okay, excellent. I'm getting my healthy fats in. But if I'm getting the salmon in, I've just increased my healthy fats more. <laughs> and there's no balance here whatsoever. There's absolutely no balance. It's just stuff that I wrote down. Now, meal four is clearly my pre-workout meal. So at least there was some smartness to this because I introduced carbs finally. And it's 120 grams of oats uh, mixed with two scoops of whey protein. Again, these days I like to get as much food as I can from real food because you get more nutrition with it. A tablespoon of peanut butter and some tuna. I mean, hopefully I wasn't eating that all together. I don't know why I need the tuna when I've already got peanut butter, oats, and whey protein. But hey, man, it's too much protein ultimately. But again, this is what we learn. So I presume what I was doing, I was essentially backloading my carbs. So I was not eating any carbs until I train. Then I was fueling myself to train. And then I was eating all my carbs afterwards, as you'll see. And that is something you can do. But again, it's not something I do today. It just doesn't sound, it doesn't sound very fun. But at least I was getting my carbs before a workout. Because don't forget, around about an hour before you do train, depending on what again your goals are you absolutely want to get your carbs in so you have energy and you're not sluggish in the gym so then we finish and of course post-workout meal 50 grams of carbs and three times whey protein now which i don't need this is the anabolic window which is look, you can do it if you want to do it and i still do it here and there just because i enjoy eating but science has proven over and over again there is no such thing as a magic 30 minute period after you train where you need to spike your body full of stuff in order to get the most progress or the most results from the gym. You can just, it's about sustainability and it's about consistency over weeks, months, days, years, whatever. You can do it if you want though. Again, it's all about calories in, calories out. And then we have our proper post-workout meal, which is 250 grams of chicken, lean minced turkey or rump steak. And this is why I know I've just copied and pasted it. Rump steak. I don't think I've ever knowingly bought rump steak in my life. 100 grams of rice, vegetables, and 20 grams of manuka honey. Again, I've never bought manuka honey either. I think manuka honey is good for the immune system, right? So when you are training hard and you're stressing your body out, it's good for that. It's also crazy expensive. So I've never bought that. And on paper, it's decent. 
but it's just chicken, rice, and vegetables. And we've, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing chicken, rice, and vegetables, but it does get boring very quickly, hence why I'm not doing it now. And then before bed, I take 50 grams of casein, my cellar casein, slow releasing protein, if you don't know. So it is a good thing to take before you go to bed, because it means you're going to be asleep and your body's still going to be releasing protein, which is good for gains. Uh, 200 grams of fat free yogurt, which I'm going to have to presume was greek yogurt otherwise what the hell was i doing 120 grams of oat and 50 grams of blueberries so that's actually not so bad i mean i would shift around i'd have i would preload my my carbs now so meals one two and three i would put carbs in and then after i've eaten my post-workout meal i would get rid of carbs that's just what i like to do before i go to bed these days but at least i got some fruit in there however this is the other thing i know for a fact i wasn't eating those blueberries because another thing that i was so stupid about was I was terrified of fruit because fruit had fructose in it and fructose was sugar as far as I was concerned because I read a bunch of dumb articles that said, oh, you may as well be eating sweets if you're eating fruit, which just isn't true at all. It's categorically nonsense. And this kind of ties into another thing I wanted to point out. Your overall health is what's most important, your heart health. These are the things that you need at number one because if you are not in 100% good shape, how are you going to train? No one's going to allow you to go nuts in the gym if your heart's only at 33%. So, you know, eat your fruit, eat your vegetables. And the good thing is I had put vegetables in there and I would have been eating broccoli and lettuce and who knows what else. But I do know for a good while there, I was just terrified of fruit because I thought that it just, well, I was just being a moron, right? I was being an idiot. I thought it was like eating candy, which somebody should come and punch me in the head. So essentially what I would have been eating would have been yogurt, casein, and then some oats which isn't so bad, or casein, whatever the hell you call it, but don't be scared of fruit is what I'm saying to you. And while we are here, before we go into the non-training day, do cardio too, because that's something else that I never did. I was convinced that cardio was the secret, I'm going to eat your gains monster. And if you did any kind of cardio, you weren't going to be able to put on size. Now, of course, if you don't do cardio, you are going to be able to make better gains in terms of putting on size for obvious reasons. I don't even need to explain that, but to me, it's all about longevity and it's all about trying to preserve yourself for as long as possible. And you work your biceps, you work your triceps, your legs, so on and so forth. Why aren't you working your heart? That's what cardiovascular is. You don't have to do crazy. You don't have to do an hour a day or anything like that. Even if you're just doing, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half a week, which is like 20 minutes a day, or you do half an hour Monday, half an hour Wednesday, half an hour Friday. You know, you can in increase your calories on those days if you really don't want to burn anything. Don't even worry about the burn thing. It's not going to eat away all your muscle if you're training possible, but it's also going to put you in the best possible well, health, again, in order to do this for as long as possible. Now, of course, you'll ignore that. I would have ignored it too, but I want to throw it out there. So we move on to non-training days. What I'm doing now is I'm spreading my carbs across the day. I don't, this is just weird to me. I mean, there is a certain science behind it, but it's, I always think it's jibber jabber. So meal one is I'm basically having the same thing as I did before, but we're adding in 100 grams of oats. Exactly the same thing with meal two, but we put in the rice. Exactly the same with meal three, but we've added sweet potato. And look, these are all good carb sources, right? They really, really are. I enjoy rice. I know everyone goes, oh, rice, rice. I like rice. I like oats too. People are, oh, I like oats. And I really like sweet potato. So I guess I just lucked out in the sense that they are, these are considered healthy bodybuilding foods. But there are other things that you can have as well. Like you're allowed a rice cake. This is okay. And so on. You can have bread. I know uh, bread, but it's absolutely fun. And then meal four, which would have been the pre-workout before, I then scrap all the carbs because I guess I've just moved them up into meals one, two, and three. And I'm having my whey protein and my tuna and my peanut butter and my avocado get thrown in there. So there's no fats apart from three whole eggs in those first three meals. You want to get your healthy fats in, right? I know if you're getting super shredded for a competition, it's going to be different, but you should have a personal trainer helping you with that. But you have to get your healthy fats in your diet. You do. You just do. It's good for you, right? You need it. You need to operate as a human being. And then after that, we go in meal five, which again is the same as earlier, but the almonds are moved in there as well. So I guess I am getting my healthy fats a little bit. And then before bed, we're doing everything. We're doing everything without the oats. I mean, this is nothing like how I eat now. Well, there are certain things that are the same. Like, do I eat eggs? Yes. Do I eat oats? Yes. Do I eat chicken? Yes. Do I eat vegetables? Yes. Uh, don't get much nuts anymore for reasons we already talked about. You know, my I think the big thing is, is that I've gone way back when it comes to whey protein or egg protein, which is what I use. I use whey protein a little bit here and there as well. Because again, I just think real food, it just benefits you better. I know it's more expensive, but I think sometimes you just got to take on that cost because you know that it's going to propel you forward. In terms of what I was doing in the gym as well, it was pure bro spit. It was really, it was pure bro spit. So it was like, you know, Monday would have been chest and triceps, Tuesday back and biceps, Wednesday arms, Thursday shoulders, Friday legs. I don't want to go on this too much because we did a whole video on it. There was nothing wrong with doing that, but I just think you're cutting your own legs off, right? When you're trying to make as much progress as possible. When you could be doing, you don't have to do a push ball leg routine, but you want to be able to, you know, want to be smashing uh, muscles twice a week. Like you really do. So 
not necessarily maybe your arms, although you could do it if you do push pull legs, but absolutely back, chest, legs, shoulders, anything else that I've forgotten. They want to be stimulated twice a week because you are, as long as you are eating right and you are recovering correctly, after a few days, your body will be ready to go again. Maybe not necessarily when you're a novice lifter. I think when you're a novice lifter, the world is basically your oyster and you can do whatever you want. So if you want to do circuit training or you want to do these bro splits, you can. But I always think you want to have it in the back of your mind that when you do start to see your progression slowing down, that's when I'll introduce the, the double time every single week and go from 52 workouts to 104 workouts depending on the muscle group you're working so i'd absolutely love to get back in my delorean and tell him that but also i'm lying to you because i just never would train legs properly like if i was tired i just wouldn't train legs when i did train legs i wasn't being as intense as i should be i remember being down in a gym in bournemouth i think this is when the epiphany hit me and i was doing squats probably with like i don't know 150 kilograms or something like that i don't know what that is in pounds and I looked at myself, I was like, someone, that's not a squat. Like, it was completely crappy form. So, thankfully, I did this. I completely took the weight off the bar. I went right back down to 220s on each side. And I made sure I went all the way down and all the way back up. And I did that for 12, 14 reps, whatever it was. And I kept that up for as long as I could until I thought, okay, this is easy now. My form is down. Then I added on an extra 10. Then I added an extra 5. You know, I just slowly progressive overload and built it up to the point now. I mean, my squats aren't great because... My body's starting to ache as I get older. So I don't do crazy heavy squats, but I go all the way down and I go all the way back up. You don't have to always go below parallel, but you do have to get some depth on your squat. Otherwise, you're not doing a squat properly. So my leg workouts were crap, which is probably why today my calves suck. Because if you're not even putting time into your quads and hamstrings, when it gets to your calves... I mean, they didn't stand a chance. Otherwise, too, aside from the fact that we absolutely could add more uh, fruit and vegetable into this diet, I don't think you can have enough fruit and vegetables. I mean, again, make sure that vegetables are pretty much good because they're essentially they're not calorie-free, but they're so low in calories and they'll satiate you too. Fruit, yeah, sure. Yeah, there are some fruits that are quite high in calories, but if you like them, I say eat them and... Well, you know, balance them out as and when you need to. But it was also my obsession with supplements. I truly thought, right, and I, maybe some people think this, which hopefully will help you out. If you're not taking, and I'm talking about not like power supplements, I'm talking about over-the-counter Holland and Barrett or GNC supplements. If I wasn't taking a concoction of pills, because I'd seen pro bodybuilders doing it in documentaries or whatever, there was no way to get into the shape that you wanted. So I would just buy everything based on the marketing. This will boost your testosterone. This will help your immune system. This will allow you to lose fat and so on and so forth. Today... I take supplements that are based in science. So, you know, I take that citrus bergamot stuff because people say that it helps you with cholesterol. So I'm, I'm going to take that because that makes sense. I take an omega-3 pill a few times a day because, again, that's going to help you with cardiovascular health too. I take a multivitamin because it just makes sense. I take a vitamin C because it will boost your immune system. But outside of that, I'm not mucking around with too many others. I mean, we've done a video about this. You can go back and watch it. But essentially, all the supplements that people are going to sell you from a nutrition point of view are absolutely worthless. Are you really going to boost your testosterone with a testosterone pill? No. Otherwise, why the hell would people be leaning towards steroids they just take the much cheaper and much more accessible testosterone pill that exists on the market but i just didn't think it was possible just by eating and lifting it makes no sense it's absolutely stupid but i think sometimes people think there's a bigger secret to lifting weights is my point and that just getting uh, your diet in check and kicking ass in the gym isn't enough but it really is to begin with Right, There are other things that maybe you want to incorporate down the line, like creatine and whey protein and who knows what else. I'm talking about, again, things you can just buy. But when you first start things off, a good healthy diet and making sure that you're being as optimal in the possible as you can in the gym, kind of gibberish that came out there, that really is enough. And the reason that other people aren't doing it is because that's hard all in itself. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you only had to go to the gym? Well, I like going to the gym, but let's just say you only had to go to the gym once a week and you could eat pizza and you would look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everybody would do it because you think, well, that's really easy, but it's not. It's hard to get your diet in check. It's hard to figure out what your maintenance calories are, what your deficit calories are, what your overeating calories are in terms to put on size. And it's hard to find the motivation to go all the time. So never forget to give yourself a pat on the back and never buy in. If something sounds too good to be true, it's absolutely too good to be true. Doesn't mean that you can't try on the off chance it does work for you but i think it's highly doubtful so i mean look at this diet now i would just <laughs> just balance it out a lot better and i would drastically reduce the protein although it's better to eat too much protein than than not enough but i think i was like Ugh, protein and everything like that and i would just like i say make sure there's more health in it and when it came to the gym uh, I, would have, I would have adopted push-pull legs rest as soon as I possibly could because the cool thing about push-pull legs is you can adapt it as you go. You don't have to be doing the same push-pull leg exercises all the time. Sometimes you can you know, have a more focused chest day. Sometimes you can have a more focused shoulder day, right? Same posterior chain can come into it. You know, Maybe it's hamstrings, maybe it's quads and so on and so forth. But we learn all this stuff. And maybe actually if I went back 10 years ago and I looked at the science that was out there, 
maybe it would have married up for this. And look, if you want to sort of back carb, I think it's called back carb loading. I can't remember. It may work for you. That's why I don't like to poo-poo on any diets, but I wouldn't do that now. I'd be miserable for meal one, two, and three. I want to put carbohydrates in my mouth. If you're interested as well, I don't think I was doing much cardio then, as already hinted upon, but now I do do fasted cardio, but I know people always ask this. You don't have to do fasted cardio either. We're just going to say that and just move on. If you want to do fasted, awesome. If you want to do non-fasted, awesome. If you want, just want to pick a random point in the day and do it, awesome. Cardio is cardio no matter when. Even if you just go for a walk at first and then build up to running, cross-training, on the Stairmaster, whatever... I think you will see a general health benefit because of it. Okay, sure, you're not going to have bigger deltoids or bigger triceps or anything like that, but you'll feel better, and hopefully that will then translate into having better gym sessions. So there you go. A bunch of mistakes I made 10 years ago. Hopefully I said something there that was of some assistance, and if not, probably me just smashing it. So that's a positive sign as well. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Uh, click the bell, ding, ding, so you know what other videos are going live. There is another video right there. Please do give it a click. New merchandise is here, Simon at the bigcartel.com. Make sure you get the Power 13 cookbook. Link in the description below. Use code Simon15 to get 15% off, and then, yeah, you can have a much better diet than this, I promise you. Add Simon to 316 on Instagram and Twitter. Patreon.com for the Simon316. If I didn't say that, can't remember. Brain is fried. Otherwise, Make sure you have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one.